today we are reviewing for the chapter 7 quiz. We're going to be reviewing different types of angles and um, different properties and names of triangles. So we're going to start with just some um, vocabulary here describing angles. Alright, so right angles are ones that are 90 degrees. Acute angles are less than 90 degrees and obtuse angles are ones that are more than 90 degrees. Adjacent angles are side by side and share a common side. For this picture, this part is the common side. That makes them adjacent. When two lines intersect, they make vertical angles. Vertical angles are across from each other and congruent. So these guys are made of the same two lines. Here's one line. Here's two lines. Those lines intersect. They have a common point in the middle. Then they're across from each other. So the 105s are vertical and the 75s are vertical. Vertical angles are always congruent, which means they have the same amount of degrees. Supplementary angles add up to 180. Sometimes you have ones that are both adjacent and supplementary. They add to 180 and they're next to each other. Sometimes you have ones that are supplementary but not adjacent. So these guys are not touching. They're not adjacent angles. They don't have a sh shared side, but they are still supplementary. Complementary angles are similar, but they add up to 90 degrees. And I like to say to remember the difference between the two supplementary straight line complementary corner the corner being this 90 degree angle all right you can have adjacent and complementary angles and you can also have complementary angles that are not adjacent so for our um, next type of problem here it says identify each pair of angles as vertical supplementary complementary or none okay so for our first one 100 plus 60, 120 plus 60, equals 180. So these are adjacent, they share a side, and they are supplementary. All right, let's check this next one. I have 60 plus 30 equals 90. So these ones are complementary. Over here we have 60 plus 40 which is 100. So this one is none or neither. All right, so let's go ahead and use some of that information to help us find missing angles. So on this first one, now a lot of people like to think that these are vertical because we see the two crisscrossy lines, but actually these are adjacent supplementary. If you ignore this part down here, these two are on the same line. This one and this one make a straight line. So I'm gonna do x plus 45 equals 180 because they are supplementary angles. I get rid of the plus 45 by subtracting 45. And I get x equals, here I need to borrow, 10 minus 5 is 5, 7 minus 4 is 3, 1 minus 0 is 1, so x equals 135 degrees. Let's take a look at this next one. This is a right angle. They don't marked, have it marked, but that's the only way we could figure it out is if we know how many total degrees, since it's not a vertical angle. Okay, so we're going to look at that as a right angle, and we're going to use that to find our missing angle. So x plus 65 equals 90. Subtract out what I know. And I get x equals, and then over here when I borrow, oh my goodness, I borrow from 
9 and wrote 7 for some reason. All right, that's an 8. This is a 10. 10 minus 5 is 5. 8 minus 6 is 2. This one's going to be 25 degrees. Supplementary and adjacent. Complementary and adjacent. All right, let's try these next two. Go ahead and pause the video and try these two on your own. All right, this one is going to be 35 degrees. That's because they're vertical. I don't need to set up an equation. I can see that their vertical angles are across from each other and made with the same two lines. Okay, over here, this is in a rectangle, which tells me that that angle is going to be 90 degrees. So to figure this one out, I'm gonna do x plus 40 equals 90. Then I'm gonna get rid of the plus 40. 40 minus 40 is zero. 90 minus 40 is 130. Yep, I wrote minus, and then I added the numbers. Let's try that again. 90 minus 40 is 50, so x equals 50 degrees. All right, let's take a look at these next ones. So type of triangle that has three congruent equal sides and three equal angles, that's an equilateral triangle. Triangle with at least two congruent equal sides, that's isosceles when you have two sides that are equal. And then a triangle that has no equal sides is called scalene. When we name a triangle, we pick one of these names to describe the sides. We also need a name to describe the angles. If it has one right angle, it is a right triangle. If it has all angles less than 90 degrees, it's an acute triangle. And if it has one angle greater than 90, it's going to be obtuse. All right, so we need to classify these triangles. That means to name them using two names. All right, I'm gonna pause, go ahead and pause the video and try to name all four triangles. Okay, so let's go ahead and try these. Number one, three equal sides means it's equilateral. And all of our angles are less than 90 degrees, so it's cute. Could have also said equilateral, equal angular, equal angular, meaning that they are acute and equal. All right, number two. So to me, it's a little hard to tell. These kind of look like they're the same. But unlike this one where we know for sure they're the same, and this one, number three, we see that these are the same. There's nothing marked here. So I'm gonna go on the assumption that these are close in length to each other, but not actually equal. So if that's true, then it's gonna be scalene, none of the sides are equal, and it's gonna be right, because there's a right angle. Number three has two marked that are equal, and this one that has two lines means that's a different side um, length than the other two. So two equal sides is isosceles. And um, looking at this top angle, it's hard to tell, but it looks like that one's obtuse. Just ever so slightly more than 90. Okay, number four, definitely obtuse on this one. It has an angle greater than 90, and then these are um, different sizes, so I'm going to write scalene as well. All right, so for our next type of problem, we're identifying um, different angles. Now, the way these particular ones are drawn, the letters are inside the shape. For most of the ones we've seen, we've had the letters on the line, and we use three of those letters to name it. But here, because the angle letters are inside the angle and not on the line, we're just going to name them with one letter. Okay, two pairs of an adjacent angles. Let's see, A and D. 
That's one pair, angle A and angle D are adjacent, they share this side. I could also say B and C, those are adjacent, they share this side. Don't forget this angle symbol. All right, two pairs of vertical angles. Well, angle B and D are vertical, they're across from each other. And angle A and angle C are also vertical. All right, number three says identify a pair of adjacent complementary. So that means two angles that add together to equal 90. And it shows us a right angle here, which means this is also going to be a right angle. And the two angles that make that up are angle T and angle U. All right, now we're going to write and solve some equations to find the value of X. So let's try this one, number four. I'm going to add my angles together, 3X plus 45. And these equal 90 degrees together because of that right angle. When we have a two-step equation like we have on this one, we do order of operations backwards. We get rid of addition and subtraction first, then we get rid of multiplication and division. So we're going to start by getting rid of the addition with subtraction. We're going to subtract 45 from both sides. We get 3x equals 45. Then we're going to divide both sides by 3. We get x equals 15 degrees. For number 5, same type of thing, except this time I have two variables. So I have x plus x minus 20 equals 90. We're going to combine our like terms. x plus x is 2x minus 20 equals 90. We've got a minus 20, so to cancel out that, we're going to add 20. So we have 2x equals 110. And then we divide both by 2 to get x equals 55. All right, go ahead and pause the video and try number 6 on your own. Okay, let's check our answers on this one. This time they're on a straight line, so they're going to equal 180. So 3x plus 25 plus our 2x, and it's going to equal 180. When I combine my like terms, 3x plus 2x equals 5x plus 25 equals 180. We are going to subtract that 25. So I have 5x equals 155. And I'm going to divide both sides by 5. And I'm going to get x equals 31 degrees. Can these lengths make a triangle and show work? So for these, you have to add and sub, um, compare. We have to see if the shorter two sides are longer than the longest side. Otherwise, they will not be able to connect to form a triangle. So here's 6 plus 9. We want to know, is that greater than 15? 6 plus 9 equals 15. Is 15 greater than 15? No. All right, and let's take a look at number two. My shortest sides are seven and five. So seven plus five, is that greater than nine? Seven plus five is 12. 12 is greater than nine? Yes. Number three, eight plus six, is that greater than 11? Eight plus six is 14. That's greater than 11, so yes. And number four, find the range for the third side. To do that, we add and subtract with the two numbers. Eight plus six equals 14. 
8 minus 6 equals 2. So the range of my numbers for the third side, 2 is less than x, which is less than 14. Go ahead and pause the video and try number 5 and 6 on your own. Okay, let's check our answers. 8 plus 4, is that greater than 12? 8 plus 4 is 12. Is 12 greater than 12? No. And then range of third sides, 11 plus 9 equals 20. 11 minus 9 equals 2. So 2 is less than x, which is less than 20. All right, now we're going to do a couple um, problems with our protractor. So if you don't have your protractor, pause the video, go find it. You're going to do these along with me. Okay, hopefully you're ready. I'm going to get my protractor. Okay, so we are going to start. We need to make a triangle with the angles 30 degrees, 65 degrees, and 85 degrees. So start with a nice straight line using the bottom of your protractor. We're going to take our uh, protractor center point, line it up with the center point. I'm going to line up the line with the line. I'm choosing to go to the right first, which means I need the bottom number for 30. And I make a point. I rotate the protractor. I line up the point I drew and the end of my line. I connect them with the line as straight as I can and label it. This was 30 degrees. Now I'm going to go back to the other end of my line, line up my end point, line up my line. 65, this time I'm using the top set of numbers. It's because 0 over here, when I'm with my line going to this direction, 0 is on the outside. Alright, so I am rotating so the end of my line and this part are connected. Oh, I need to trace this. Not do a very nice job there. Let me erase it and try it again. What a mess. Oh, and in doing that, I lost where the end of my line was. Okay. All right, that looks better. I'll erase this little extra tail too. Okay, so this one we just did was 65 degrees, which means the one on the top is gonna be 85. You should double check it by um, measuring. Put your protractor on top of your triangle, rotate it, center point on the angle you're measuring and line the line up with the line. And then take a look at your other one, 85. Yep, looks pretty close. Let's take a look at our next one, a triangle with a two inch side and a three inch side that meet at a 40 degree angle. I'm gonna need a ruler. Vast majority of protractors have a ruler on the bottom. But if your protractor does, doesn't, then you'll need a ruler. Usually protractors look like this with a ruler on the bottom. The big ones are the inches, the little ones are centimeters. Okay, two inch side. You do need to label it. And then 40 degree angle. So I'm gonna move my um, ruler away. I'm gonna find my protractor. I'm gonna line up my end of my line. Line up here, okay, 40 degrees. 40 on the bottom is right there. Make my point. And then when I connect them, I do need the ruler. So on the bottom, if you're using the ruler on the bottom of your protractor, you do need to pay attention to the fact that you need to line it up at zero so that you can draw a three inch side. Here's my 40 degree angle. And then I need to draw my third side by connecting this and this. So my two ends I connect. 
All right. Okay, and our last type of problem is practicing using the protractor to draw some angles. Draw a pair of angles that measure 25 degrees. So we're going to go ahead and draw the line. Remember, you should be doing this on your paper along with me. Draw the line, center point. I'm going to line up that center point with the center point of my protractor. I'm going to draw a uh, line up the line I drew with the line of the protractor. 25, I'm going to go ahead and just make my angle go into the right here. So to the right, zero is on the bottom. 25 is going to be right here. Then I rotate my protractor so that I have the one I just drew and the end here connected. You do need to make sure that that line goes in both directions. And I have 25 degrees and 25 degrees. It says pair, so you do need to make sure you're labeling both. The vertical angles need to be across from each other. All right, and our last one here, draw a pair of adjacent supplementary angles where one angle measures 120 degrees. So we're gonna start the same as the last one. We're going to do a straight line. Oh my, that doesn't look very straight. Okay, we're gonna do arrow on the end, arrow on the end, pick a point for the middle. Line up your line in your center point. 120 degrees. So I'm going to still make mine going to the right. So I'm going to use the bottom set of numbers. So my 120 degrees is going to be on the right side, the right angle that I drew. Okay, on these adjacent supplementary, I'm not going to draw the line all the way through. Okay, this one's 120. If your 120 doesn't look obtuse like mine does, then that means you used the wrong 120. Then you need to label the other one because it does say to draw a pair. So you're going to do 180, they're supplementary, minus 120, 60 degrees is going to be this other angle. 